Competition issues can result from several factors, and enforcement is not always the most suited tool to address these issues. Therefore, competition authorities need a diversified toolkit, particularly in the face of a complex, fast-changing economic environment. Market studies are a flexible tool that allows competition authorities to examine broader competition issues in a market. They usually conclude with recommendations for regulatory changes or calls for changes in firms' behavior. In a few jurisdictions, market studies can also lead to the imposition of remedies. Moreover, they can enable more informed enforcement intervention and advocacy initiatives. Most competition authorities around the world use market studies in some form in the web, ranging from short informal assessment to lengthy with formal processes involving multiple rounds of a stakeholder input and empirical analysis. Market studies are well suited to analyse emerging competition issues. Emerging competition issues can be categorised according to their drivers can be structural drivers, demand-side drivers or regulatory drivers. Structural issues emerge, for example, when there are large economies of scale and scope, high barriers to entry, strong network effects, winner takes most dynamics, all of which can lead to increased concentration in the market, therefore changing its structure. Serious demand-side issues have arisen with the increased digitalization of markets. One example is the increased use of DAG patterns. They're also known as tricks using websites and apps that make consumers do something that is not in their best interest, therefore causing harm. Finally, regulatory competition issues can materialize, for instance, when regulations do not keep pace with changes in the market, or it is the new policy initiative that changes the market dynamics itself. Market studies analyze whether there are competition problems in a whole sector instead of analyzing the conduct of individual firms in that market. Therefore, the, these studies are holistic in nature and can cover a broader set of issues than can be done in competition enforcement. In the case of emerging competition issues, authorities are unlikely to have had enforcement cases yet or have detailed knowledge. Hence, the use of market studies may be a beneficial tool to gain better understanding of the market in question. Moreover, competition enforcement tends to focus on the actual or potential harm caused by historical or ongoing anti-competitive practices. Market studies, in contrast, contribute by providing the flexibility to be forward-looking. Finally, market studies provide an opportunity for an authority to reduce uncertainties about how the authority will apply competition principles for new or fast-changing business models and markets, or where there have been recent changes. This enables the authority to shape early on the development of business practices in new or changing markets in a way that is compatible with competition principles. However, market studies also have downsides. First, recommended changes to legislation or regulation tend to be static in nature and can take time to implement. At a time of rapid technological change, they may quickly become obsolete. In addition, in most jurisdictions, recommendations are not legally binding. Second, due process guarantees are lower than in competition enforcement and normally market studies do not undergo judicial review. And of course, Market studies can be costly and time-consuming. The OECD's Market Study Guide and the ACN's Best Practice Handbook provide precious guidance on how to conduct effective market studies. The first step is to select and prioritize sectors that require further investigation. Competition authorities should focus their efforts on a few selected market studies that have the potential to improve competition dynamics and to increase the authority's wealth of knowledge. The second step is rigorous scoping and planning. Competition authorities should clearly 
identify the scope and depth of their analysis and commit to a detailed timeline. The third step is initial desk research to collect preliminary information on the product or service, on competitors, consumers and regulatory framework. At this stage, many competition authorities officially launch the study. Making the study public ensures transparency, simplifies the interaction with stakeholders and allows unexpected sources of information to come forward. The fifth step, the selection of the methodology and the ensuing data collection, is the core of the research. The most used tools to data collection are stakeholder interviews and requests for information. Surveys can be a valuable alternative when consumers are too numerous or heterogeneous as this allows for the systematic use of interviews or targeted data requests. Depending on the outcome of the data collection process, it might be worth gathering additional information or involve external experts or liaise with sector regulators. At this stage, the data should be ready for analysis. The analytical methodology can entail identifying the market structure and key characteristics, price analysis, price concentration analysis, supply and demand focused analysis and a regulatory assessment. The subsequent crucial step is the drafting of the final report. Summarizing the results of many months of research is challenging. Yet, all that work will have an impact only as long as the competition authority can present it in a clear, engaging and compelling way. Then, the final step is expose evaluation. Did the market study actually make a difference? To answer this question, Competition authorities should monitor the implementation of the recommendations and determine whether competition problems continue to persist. Since market studies are complex and resource intensive, learning from past experience gained by other competition authorities can help improve their quality and effectiveness.